Welcome everyone to part two of War Design for Bending, presented on behalf of ThinkBrick Australia. So just some background information before we begin. This is the second part to the War Design for Bending series, covering vertical bending. This presentation will go through relevant standards such as AS3700 masonry structures and outlines some design considerations for vertical bending. This presentation will also go through a worked example for a brick wall. One-way vertical bending refers to the vertical bending of a wall given an out-of-plane loading such as wind or earthquake loads. As you can see in the diagram, vertical bending occurs along the horizontal failure plane that results from the out-of-plane loading. Robustness is considered as a factor that ensures serviceability of the masonry under construction. At a minimum, walls shall be designed to resist an ultimate, uniformly distributed out-of-plane loading of 0.5 kPa. For load-bearing members, Vertical loads applied at the top of the wall shall be ignored when determining the wall's robustness. The minimum design compressive stress, FD, shall be considered when designing a wall for vertical bending. It is based on an equivalent compressive stress that is applied at a distance equal to half the height of the wall below the top lateral support. This is shown in figure A. Factors such as the wall self weight and other dead loads such as slabs or roof trusses shall be considered when determining the minimum design compressive stress. An unreinforced brick wall shall be designed to withstand vertical bending forces from short-term actions such as out-of-plan wind loads, earthquake loads, or similar forces. The design vertical bending moment, MDV, shall be less than the vertical bending moment capacity, MCV. The vertical bending capacity shall be taken as the minimum of the three equations shown below, where phi, is the capacity reduction factor, F-MT, which is the characteristic flexural tensile strength of the masonry, ZD, which is the section modulus of the bedded area, and finally FD, which is the minimum design compressive stress on the bed joints. The first two equations shall be used where the characteristic flexural tensile strength of the masonry is greater than zero, and the third equation shall be used where the characteristic flexural tensile strength of the masonry is zero. It shall be noted that the minimum design compressive stress on the bed joint, FD, shall not be greater than 0.36 MPA. We will now go through a worked example on how to determine the vertical bending capacity of an unreinforced brick wall. This example requires us to design a load-bearing wall with a total out-of-plane loading of 0.5 kPa. The wall is 2.7 meters high, made of standard brick units, using full bedding of M3 mortar. The wall is supporting a slab, which is imposing a UDL of 30 kN per meter. We will determine the vertical bending capacity of the wall, and check whether it is greater than the design loading. Using a total out of plane loading of 0.5 kPa, the design bending moment is calculated to be 0.46 kN meters for the 2.7 meter high wall. The shear and bending diagrams are shown on the right to represent how the values are obtained. We will not consider the dead load from the slab at the moment. The capacity reduction factor, phi, is assumed to be 0.6 for unreinforced masonry, which is derived from table 4.1 of AS3700. The characteristic tensile strength of the masonry, F-MT, is 0.2 MPa, which is obtained from clause 3.3.3 of AS3700. The section modulus of the bedded area, ZD, is calculated to be 2.02 times 10 to the 6 millimeters cubed per meter. As discussed before, the design compressive stress from the wall's dead load and other factors contribute to the bending capacity of the wall. Hence, the design compressive stress acting on the bed joint at mid height of the wall as a result of the wall's self weight is calculated to be 0.023 MPa, given that the density of the clay masonry is 0.19 kilonewtons per meter squared per 10 mil thickness. Here, the vertical bending moments are calculated. The first equation accounts for the tensile strength of the masonry, as well as the compressive strength provided by the wall's dead weight, which is calculated to be 0.29 kilonewton meters. The second equation accounts for only the tensile strength of the masonry, which is calculated to be 0.73 kilonewton meters. The minimum of the two values is accepted, which comes out to be 0.29 kilonewton meters. As the vertical bending capacity is less than the design vertical bending moment, 
the wall will fail and must be redesigned to meet the design out of plane loading. So how do we improve this design? Well, there are a few methods in which this can be achieved. Firstly, we can add another skin of brick to increase the overall vertical bending capacity of the wall. Secondly, we can use a larger brick unit to increase the section modulus of the bedded area, which in turn increases the overall vertical bending capacity. And finally, we can consider the overall contribution of the dead load from the slab to increase the compressive stress acting on the bed joint, which increases the overall vertical bending capacity. We will go through these in the following slides. Here is a design chart from our TBA 04 manual, which can be found on our TBA website. To read this graph, anything below the chosen curve is deemed okay for use. Here, a 2.7 meter high wall using standard 110 mil thick bricks is not okay, given a design loading of 0.5 kPa, and thus requires redesigning. Adding a second leaf of brick in accordance with clause 4.11 of AS3700 will increase the vertical bending moment capacity. This can be achieved either by connecting the two leaves by brick ties and a 10 mil thick mortar layer, or bonding the two leaves with header units, as shown in the diagram on the right. By doing this, we will increase the section modulus of the bedded area. Thus, the vertical bending moment capacity is calculated to be 1.26 kilonewton meters which is larger than the design vertical bending moment. Specifying a larger unit will increase the section modulus of the bedded area, which in turn increases the overall vertical bending capacity. Using a 150 mm thick brick, the new section modulus is calculated to be 3.75 times 10 to the 6 mm cubed per meter. Thus, the vertical bending moment capacity is calculated to be 0.54 kilonewton meters which is greater than the design vertical bending moment. We now consider the contribution of the dead load from the slab at the top of the wall. However, this alone cannot be used to achieve the robustness requirement. As stated before, vertical loads applied at the top of the wall shall be ignored when determining the wall's robustness. However, if this design considers a UDL in conjunction with the addition of the second leaf or a thicker unit, the design vertical bending capacity will be further increased. In this case, we will consider both the contribution of the dead load from the slab and the thicker brick unit. A factor of 0.4 is applied to the UDL in accordance with AS1170. The design compressive stress on the bed joint now accounts for the dead load of the wall, the UDL and the larger brick unit, which is calculated to be 0.103 megapascals. Thus, we find that the vertical bending moment capacity is 0.84 kilonewton meters which is greater than the design vertical bending moment. So as you can see, there are various ways to improve a wall's design for vertical bending. The association has also curated a design manual that provides some information on the design requirements for vertical bending for brick. It contains a lot of useful information on the design and construction requirements, and I highly urge you guys to check it out. If you have any other questions regarding vertical bending design, please don't hesitate to contact the association and we will be more than happy to help you guys out. The association also offers a wide range of free resources available to the public, such as technical manuals, research papers, and case studies. The association also has a technical hotline where we can answer any of your brick or block related inquiries. Should you have any questions about the design and construction of brick or blocks, please feel free to give us a call on the technical hotline. This concludes the second part of War Design for Bending. Thank you for your time and we hope you enjoyed today's presentation.